Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Taking you with me today on my nice little walk down to the used burn, and I'm going to give out some information before it's officially announced. Obviously, it's set to be announced, to be fair. Fabrizio Romano came out last night saying, Here we go, the alarm bells are ringing. Alan St. Maximin is off to Saudi Arabia. Will Kylian Mbappe be joining, by the way? That is breaking news today. Uh, 259 million world record bid has been put in there for Kylian Mbappe from Al Halal. St. Maximin is off to Al Ali, um, and he will join up with a few other noticeable departures from the Premier League as well. The likes of Bobby Firmino uh, will be up top with Alan St. Maximin next season. I tell you what, it is becoming an exciting league, that one, and you know. Alan St. Maximin did indeed put out a little message last night on his Instagram. We know we've covered these cryptic messages before. This one was just of the War Flags banner that was uh, done for him a, a season or so ago. And that's all he put. Do you know what I mean? And it's he'll drop a goodbye. This is Monday morning. I think he'll drop a goodbye. It'll be announced today. If not, in the next 24, 40 hours, that Alan St. Maximin is indeed sold to Saudi Arabia's uh, Al Ali. So, £30 million is what we're on with maybe a few add-ons. Um, St. Max was going to sign a, I think it was a, only a three-year deal, maybe. So, maybe he wants to go back to Europe at some point as well. But for the moment, he is going to set off to the Middle East. And I'd like all the apologies, please, because uh, I've been saying for about a year now that he would leave. And even even did a video a month ago saying, you know, Barnes will replace St. Maximin. Got loads of grief for it. Said I was talking shit. Said I was being negative. Said I was lying. Said he's not going anywhere. Well, I like an apology. Thank you very much because he is off. Told you all about it. Yeah, in the know. All that. Yeah. Uh, just waiting his up. But let's, I, I have been saying it for ages. I said he would leave. He is leaving. It's all but done. But maybe by the time I put this video out, um, it will be done. It will be signed, sealed, and delivered to Arabia. So, Alan St. Maximin. Well, it's a it's a tough one, and I think there's a lot of attachment to St. Maximum from Newcastle fans who are sad by this, and some even say, you know, Harvey Barnes is a downgrade, which I massively disagree with. I think Harvey Barnes is a big upgrade on Alan St. Maximum. 13 goals last season Harvey Barnes got for relegated Leicester. Alan St. Maximum scored one goal in his last 46 appearances for Newcastle United. That one goal was outstanding. <laughs> Obviously, it would be. He doesn't score tappings. It was the volley against Wolves in the last minute, the equalise at Le Mans, you, but <sighs> few and far between. I mean, few and far between is an understatement when there's one in 46. Do you know what I mean? That is a huge understatement. Um, and it, that's in terms of his goals. I just mean in terms of his performances and, and assists or uh, contributions to winning the game. It's You can look at world beater against Man City and you can go 10 games without doing a single thing, apart from 17 step overs that lead to nothing. Do you know? So... For me, I love Alan St. Maximin. He will always be uh, fondly remembered in my eyes. You know, a bit of a cult hero. A beacon of light during the dark days of Steve Bruce and Mike Ashley. Uh, a real saviour. And if it wasn't for him, listen, we probably would have got relegated. It was it was down to him and Martin Nebraska and Callum Wilson being the main three that spring to mind of why we managed to stay in the Premier League on that shoestring Ashley budget. So, Alan St. Maximin. I really like his interactions with the fans as well, you know, fan favourite, giving away watches and stuff and just having a good relationship with the with the city and that. Um, so for me, well done, Alan St. Maximin. Thanks for all the memories, but uh, I think it's just time to move on. I think with Harvey Barnes, he massively suits our system way more than Alan St. Maximin will under Eddie Howe. He hasn't got the intensity for it and he hasn't got the consistency for it. Barnes' record speaks for itself. Alan St. Maximin's does in the wrong way I suppose and if you can get 30 million for him it is a light for light replacement it is essentially a couple of million more we've paid for Harvey Barnes um, so I'm, I'm in favour of it and Harvey Barnes did indeed make his debut last night in the, the USA the midnight kickoff against Villa in that six goal thriller um, we're going to talk about that in a minute because I'm just going to round off the thing about Alan St. Maximin by saying you know people are questioning why is Eddie Howe sold and why have Newcastle United done this why are they saying Harvey Barnes I've got faith in Eddie Howe. I've got trust in Eddie Howe. And I'll rate Eddie Howe. Not just me, not just as a Newcastle fan. A lot of these fans do as well. Have a look at this. Speaking of Eddie Howe, now I know a lot of Newcastle fans out there would argue the case that he might be the best manager in the Premier League. Number one, 
Number one in the Premier League after what he's achieved in Newcastle United, taking this from relegation to the Champions League in such a short space of time. However, Skybet have been put a survey together where they say he is the third best in the Premier League, which I suppose is sensible, is reasonable behind Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, of course, two of the best managers to ever do it, especially Pep Guardiola and his dominance at Man City. Important over 1,600 fans that were interviewed by Skybet in the Skybet Fan Hope survey. When asked who is the best pound for pound manager in the league, these fans, 10% of them, voted Eddie Howe third, and that is ahead of the likes of Manchester United's Eric Ten Hag, who obviously beat Eddie Howe in the Cup final, Carabao Cup, but this is Premier League we're talking about, and it's right regardless. And of course, you're talking Mikel Arteta, who pushed Man City considerably well in the Premier League as well. Runners up for us last year. Mikel Arteta and Brighton's very highly rated Deserby, as well as Thomas Frank, who's done an outstanding job at Brentford. Eddie Howe is above all of those. This is assuming that each manager had the same level of players and the same budget. For me, it's nailed on. I mean, third in the league, I think it was a disgrace that Eddie Howe did not win manager of the season last year. Yes, I know, Man City, Pep Guardiola, he's done it again. It's easy. Eddie Howe would win it every year with Man City. A lot of managers would, although I, I'm not one of those ones who are saying that about Pep in terms of the team picks itself and stuff. He is an amazing manager, one of the best ever. But last year, Eddie Howe guided Newcastle way above expectations, finishing in the Champions League, taking us to a cup final. Hasn't spent a large amount, as people try and believe, because of the Saudi Arabian takeover. Not a huge abundance of being spent, you know, that you, you were still signing players like Nick Pope, nobody wanted him, 10 million from Bernie. Trippier, in his 30s, 12 million from Atletico, we weren't exactly fighting people off for him. You know, we've signed players like Dan Bain, who Eddie Howe has revolutionised the likes of Joe Linton, Megan Almiron, flops under the previous regime, and he's got them firing in the Premier League now. So the turnaround that Eddie Howe has done is remarkable, it's unbelievable. And, you know, from relegation for that, the Champions League, in one season, fair enough if this was three, four years down the lane of takeover and we'd spent a billion. Not the case. We've spent a couple of hundred million. We've spent less than the likes of Aston Villa and West Ham. Then Chelsea, who spent way more than us in one January window and had already had, surely, a better base than Newcastle, who were destined for the Championship every year under the previous regime. So, for me, Eddie Howe more than deserves to be the third best manager in the Premier League, if not higher. Now you can read all about the other findings in the 2023 Sky Bet Fan Hope survey. Add your voice to the debate and share your predictions for the upcoming season on Sky Bet Fan Central. The link is in the video description below. So there we go, make sure you just get involved in that Sky Bet Fan Hope survey as well. Link is in the description. So yeah, back to last night then. The Premier League Summer Series has kicked off and it kicked off with a bang. Big goal mouth action there you know Newcastle were 2-0 down playing a, a mad formation of like three at the back Paul Dummett was there I, I felt like going to bed I had enough um, by the way speaking of going to bed right if anyone can help me out there who experiences back problems let me know if you've got any advice and tips because the last few days I've had horrendous back pain during the night and when I wake up now it's fine I'm walking about it's fine but during the night bloody hell really bad back pain waking us up and um Aye, it's knee good, like. So if anyone's got any help, I see a lot of people are seeing, you know, stretch and yoga and uh, a few other things like heat pads and deep heat and that. And I'm going to try them all because I'm telling you, it's lifting and it's affecting my sleep and I don't like it. So <laughs> it's nasty back pain. So let us know if you can help about that. Um, but I'll tell you what, who wasn't whinging about back pain yesterday? It was Harvey Barnes, you know, straight off the, the plane, straight doing interviews at the hotel, meeting the lads. And straight on the pitch for 20 minutes. I think he came on 70th minute, was it? Um, in that 3-3 draw with Villa. You know, Isaac Wilson and Elliot Anderson with the goals. Elliot Anderson looking absolutely unbelievable, by the way. He's got a chance this season, like, of, of taking a claim to start in that. Because he has been on fire. And uh, Louis Miley as well. 17-year-old. He looks brilliant. So I'm happy with that. Pleased to see how they get on. Good start for Newcastle. Good fitness run out for a lot of them. In a 3-3 uh, very exciting draw out there in America. So, Alan St. Maxman, let's finish it off. Farewell to Maxi. He will be signing for Saudi Arabia's Al Ali in a £30 million pound deal. Obviously, Harvey Bond is already in, made his debut. Everyone asking yesterday on the Transfer Talk Live show, remember, live at five every Sunday, you know the score. Who's next? Well, Newcastle 
still in talks with Tino Livermento. Eddie Howe was asked this yesterday, you know, who's next? And um, he said that it would be, it would be uh, hopefully things about progressing over the next few days, you know. So will we see Livermento arrive in the tune in the next few days? Let's hope so. It'll be decent because we need, even though we had so many defenders on the pitch in the pre-season and these rotating these fullbacks and that obviously wants someone else in and Livermento, even though thirty million pound bid got rejected, is very much on top of that agenda. Let me know what you think finally as we say farewell Alan St Maximilian's time at Newcastle. Did you watch the match last night? What did you just make of it? Remember get involved in that Skybet fan survey. Smash a like, subscribe to my channel TV and enjoy yourself.